Hey guys, it's Tick and Tech. Welcome back to Jank Play. Yeah, Tomb Raider 3, baby. Let's go this way first. We saved the men from the Velocipaster, and uh, now we're going to oh, move Oh, that's on. a wall. Okay, good to <laughs> We're going to go in this crevice and look out on the uh, We're going to go this way first. <laughs> oh, I guess we did. Well, I'll bet there's something down there. There could be. We're going. Right. I just saved. <gasps> Any consequences be damned. Well. <laughs> I said there could be. You never know. <laughs> the guys just watched her commit suicide. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to continue reading these beautiful cards. Uh, one of my okay. favorite activities is listening to you list off magic cards. <laughs> <laughs> Mentor of the meat. Whenever another creature with power two or less earns a benefit under your control, you may pay one. If you do, okay. Yeah, that's not so bad. That's not bad. Yes. It's scattered groves. <laughs> oh, what the hell? What are you doing? I just killed a man on accident. <laughs> uh, no? Yes? They do. Stop shooting the man! Why'd you kill him? I'm having trouble. <laughs> Freaking, I don't know why. She's fucking targeting them and not the fucking Velociraptor. That's so weird. Maybe. You're gonna go get some cards coming? Yeah, they have it. Yep. Nice. Well, basically, so with the Imperial deck, no. um, how the Imperial deck works is that it's kind of a mixture of just watch them. Like, you see they can heal They're yeah. boosting those tokens and then squad. So, like, the, the human aspects, like, it makes, like, weak tokens. And then the space marines will either be individually, like, they'll have, they'll be okay power wise, but they'll have abilities to kind of make them more viable. Mm -hmm. Or, if they're tokens, um, mm -hmm. then they get boosted by commanders. But one of the big things with that deck is also, like, swarming. So, freaking pay the mana cost. Oh, they may. Pay two extra mana repeatedly for every two mana and you get a, a, a token copy of that <sighs> card. Fuck. I hate this um, game sometimes. And so that's kind of how the, the Imperium deck works. And oh, with the, uh, the Chaos deck, <laughs> the way the Chaos deck works is it's more like it, trying to couch your spells correctly. Yeah. And um, kind of like really powerful demons. Like oh yeah, yeah, no, I, I don't know. Yeah. And so, my hope with the Tyranids deck is the Tyranids are, kind of, are like one of the few that can kind of actively evolve. Yeah, uh, in a sense, like, they can actually change their biology to kind of better suit the nice. opponents they're fighting. And, you know, it's not something groundbreaking. Like, okay, I just completely changed this species um, to an entirely different thing. It's more like they have various forms to suit various um, uh, needs. So what I wouldn't be surprised about is massive token generation. Like, mm. literally, it is a turning, turning deck. It should be a couple really strong bioforms. That whole thing is being like the line breaker. Like, oh, I just kill a lot of your creatures. Or, oh, the moment I come oh. out onto the field, I, like, take the biggest creature you have and I just fight it immediately. Like, the, the more powerful bioforms just do, like, big, big, you know, big murderage. <laughs> And then the rest is just token generation, because that's how the Tyranids win most of their fights, is literally just having enough numbers to over- like, literally having more organisms in the fleet than you have bullets. Because the whole premise is, as long as they win the fight, mm -hmm. they can just recoup all of the biomass that was lost. Because they, they just eat everything. All the bio- like, all the biological matter on the planet will get consumed. So, as long as they win, it doesn't matter how many of them die, because they'll just put it in the big digestive pits that they'll make, and just reabsorb it, and then they can burnt out new ones in each place. Nice. So. We'll have to try it against my goblins. Uh, game. Well, again, I haven't bought it yet, so I could be entirely wrong, but I would just think that, because, like, squad was an entirely new thing for me. I didn't even, I've never yeah. seen squad before until that. The chaos deck was more straightforward, it's just kind of hard to like make sure you're properly using the creatures and the spells okay. so that they yeah. mid-max off of each other 
but the, the chaos deck is actually a lot more basic in how it's supposed to be used. Fuck you. Um, granted, squad isn't complicated. It's just I hadn't seen it before. And then there's yeah. crew, which I also hadn't seen before. But crew is fine because you get weak tokens, and then the tokens will just man the war machines. And it's pretty nice because you can bounce back and forth. Like, we were talking about it before, how, uh, like, uh, war machines like that just invalidate things like pacifism because they constantly change back and forth from creatures to artifacts. So yeah. they can't be actually tied down by a lot of stuff like that. Yeah, because um, they just lose all those yeah. enchantments. And then but stuff that's like the Voyage. thing is, like, while it's a freaking creature, you could enchant it with something that just makes it a 1-1 one, one bug that doesn't have any abilities. Oh, true, and then it wouldn't revert back to... Yeah, yeah. but assuming it didn't have a stipulation like that. Yeah. Like, I, assuming it didn't oh. say all of its current abilities, like, disappear, right. then even if it becomes a 1-1 one, one bug, it still has the abilities that it has. It's just a 1-1 one, one bug now instead of a 1-1 one, one, uh, artifact creature. But because it has its ability, it will still automatically default back to becoming an artifact, and then all of a sudden that thing is implied. So that card would have to specify yeah. it loses its ability to play. Yeah, it loses all and abilities. And then there's also the fact that it has void shields, which was another new thing specific because it's an imperial bank, it's 40 k bank. Anything, I think it was that had a mana cost of 3 or less, just doesn't affect it at all. So if you had, like, a murder, it wouldn't do anything to it because it's three mana and yep. void shields would just protect it from that so it actually stops it from being killed by really cheap spells which is really cool um so i need to build a uh, i need to build a commander deck based around uh grave pack yeah because your goblins are we're already so about yeah my goblins don't already yeah. smash so all competition you were, you were saying that you need a board life that is inaccurate have board white. It just takes the form of goblin projector. Yeah, I don't have a single card that just kills everything. Yeah. I have my deck that wins. You just sacrifice <laughs> goblins to kill everything. No, that's basically... Brayden's deck. Yeah. My goblin deck doesn't do that. Well, you don't have a goblin commander deck. I do okay. have a goblin commander deck. Yes, yeah. that's the one he was talking about. Yeah, yeah. my goblin commander deck just rapes you. Let's go with that. Uh-huh. Well, we'll have to try it against that. Yeah. Well, my hope is that like, again, you know, Tyrants could definitely just work like I, you know, I'm just not expecting them to. But like I said, I knowing how the, like, uh, seeing how the other two decks played and stacking them up with how I know that the factions kind of work. Yeah. Uh, nothing's really crazy about them. Like, they, it's not like they subvert anything that they... Oh, fuck like, you! Kind of expect you saw that, right? No, I didn't. I was just looking away. I think I saw you do a backflip and, land, like, go off an edge. Uh, I landed where I was supposed to, and I was pushed off by a velociraptor's ass. <laughs> I mean, I guess nice. it occupied too much of that space, and so it kind of wounded you. Yeah. That's not a good reason to push me off. I made that joke. But yeah, no, like, that, that is how I imagine Tyranids will work. You can look it up. Literally, I mean, I guess I can look the cards up, but if we're going there tomorrow anyways, then what's the matter? Oh, because well, you don't get to see what are in what cards are in it yeah. without okay. buying the I'll, deck. I'll, I'll look it up here in just a second. I'm going to get the dog to shut up. Okay. Ah! See? <laughs> that is the second time that's happened. <laughs> I'm going to continue reading. Yes, please do. I would rather listen to that than, than Connor. <laughs> <laughs> Scattered Groves. Uh, Enters the battlefield tap, cycling two. Uh, swords of plowshares. Swords two plowshares, isn't it? Nope. Excel target creature, its controller gains life equal to its power. That's pretty good. For only one mana. Uh, well of lost dreams. Whenever you gain life, you may pay X, where X is less than or equal to the amount of life you gained. If you do, draw X card. Yeah. That's a lot. That's good. No, Brayden! Oh, you did it. You survived. Don't forget to save so you never have to do that again. Alright. Field tested frying pan. <laughs> uh, when there's a battlefield, create a food token. Then create a one on white halfling creature token and attach field tested frying pan to it. A uh, equipped creature has, whenever you gain life, this creature has plus X plus X until the turn where X is the amount of life you gain. And equipped for two. Alright. Uh. Motivated Pony. Trample Haste. When it attacks, attacking creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn. Attacking creatures. 
Tunnel turn. If a food entered the battlefield under your control this turn, untap those creatures and they get an additional plus two plus two until end of turn. That's wild. You have an idea what this Great Pelt Refuge! What? So, for most of the days today, it's a very starting today. Um, just nothing is able to set with clouds. I don't know, maybe your guys' internet's shitting. I know earlier I was like, just trying to load a YouTube video and it was like, it's also not. It's like unable to sync. And it's like, I just downloaded it. And it's like, I'm unable to sync your file. Oh, Brayden. I know. Sadness. Okay, Woodland Cemetery. That's a lame. Uh, go for the throat. Destroy target non artifact creature. Uh, trading post. Pay one, discard a card, you gain the clock. Pay one. Pay one light. Create a zero one white goat creature token. Pay one. Sacrifice a creature. Return target artifact card from the graveyard to your hand. Pay one. Sacrifice an artifact. Draw a card. Jeez. Uh, Butterbur Bree Innkeeper. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of your uh, end step, you don't control food. Create a food token. Okay. Oh, right, he talked about that. I know you just read the comments about those things. Yeah. He's like, they're better off, they're better for, like, console players because they... Or the saves. Yeah. They, they act like the ink ribbons do in Resident Evil. Yeah. Yeah. So they actually make sense. For some reason. You type in the name of the deck and then, car and then uh, card list. It, let's see, uh... Hit lane rope can't be sacrificed. Pay one, search your library for basic bank card, put on the battlefield, tapped, then shuffle. The player to your right gains control of it. Pay two, tap it. Draw a card. The player to your right gains control of it. Okay, so now the real question is does it untap? Probably not, right? Probably not. <laughs> guarantee. That's like a that's like a guarantee in all pre-built. Commanders, most commander decks even. Cool. Yeah, but also Soul Ring is just such a good oh, card. Gosh. It really is. Like you're insane not putting it in a deck. Yeah, seriously. Even like a not a commander deck. Yeah. No, seriously. Yeah. It, I mean, like if you're just trying to get extra mana, it's really oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Dude, Chromatic Lantern is way better. Than so there's one commander mm -hmm. for the Tyranid deck, which makes sense. Yeah. It's a Swarm Lord, which makes sense. It is six. Red, blue, yeah. green, and then three colors. It's <laughs> five five. It has rapid regeneration. The swarm lord enters the battlefield with two mm -hmm. plus one plus one counters on it for each time you cast your commander from the commander game. And then Xenos coming. Whenever a creature you control with a counter and die, draw a card. Oh, so it comes back bigger every, every time, time? It comes back, it gets two more plus one plus one. Okay, so basically you're every, because it always goes up by two every time, yes. so you're just, every time it goes up, you're just spending that mana also to getting it in more. Yeah. So it gets bigger. So it does, that does help. Yeah. yeah. Especially if it's direct damage or something like that. Yeah. But, yeah, and every time a creature with counter on it dies, it draw a card. Yeah, it's pretty happy. Maybe you smell funny. Oh. You smell like that. You got it. Mm -hmm. I've made this jump a few times now. <laughs> Just a couple. Alright, uh, Cultivate. Search letter for two basic land cards. Uh, Pristine Talisman. Add one colorless, you gain one life. That's cool. Okay, so, um, I found out that it does not even look like it's token generation. It looks like it, this, a lot of this deck Maybe. actually literally just works off of the swarm work. Do you know what Ravenous does? No. Basic mana cost, X. <laughs> For every mana that's tapped into it after its base cost, add a plus one plus one power. Yeah. And it doesn't have a, it doesn't have a base cost. Right? Yeah. Yeah. What is it? Um, 
Yeah, so an aberrant. It is two and then X. Oh, I thought you said it was just Well, I guess X. technically the base would be three. No, it's, no, it's no, no, this is two. No, it's two. the base mana cost and then X. Yes, yeah. yeah, so, so the base, base is two. two. Yeah. Well, and when no, counting mana cost... Three because if you pay no, when two, you're paying mana cost... Zero, zero. No, when that you're, still counts. When you're counting mana cost, you only count the like physical numbers. Yeah, like this, X this. doesn't count. It's just zero when counting mana cost. So, so you could cast him and then he'd just be dead. Yeah. Oh. You could okay. do that. So... Okay, so yeah. if you want it to live, you need to pay three. Yeah, you need to pay at least three. Okay. But you can only, you can just pay two, and then he'll just die. Here. Which, I mean, can be useful for some cards and stuff. So, you know. Yeah, but that looks like it's going to be a big thing. Okay. Harmonize. Draw three cards. <laughs> Prize pig. Whenever you gain life, put that many ribbon counters on Prize pig. If there are three or more ribbon counters on it, remove three counters and untap it. Add one man of any color. That's cool. Birds of Paradise is in that deck. Oh, is it? Yeah. Of course. Preposterous Innkeeper. When the Innkeeper enters the battlefield, create a treasure token. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield, under your control, you gain one more. Oh, that's interesting. There's a card in this deck called Nexos. It's a 2 drop 2 2. It has strategic coordinator. Basic land you control have tab add two colorless. Spend this mana only on cards that contain. So, like, ravenous. Yeah. yeah. Alright, uh, Shire Sheriff. Vigilance. In his battlefield, you may sacrifice a token. If you do, exile turret creature and opponent controls until he leaves the battlefield. For only two mana? That's pretty good. Uh, Crypt Incursion. Exile all creature cards from target player's graveyard. You gain three life for each card. Exile this one. Pretty good. What is Ward to do? What? In what is ward? It oh, means yeah. however much it costs to like target a creature, like it basically. Costs that much more. Yeah. So if I were to cast like a lightning strike, it it's oh my bad. Yeah. 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 And what is it? Ward one or something? Ward two. Yeah. So it would cost five to cast a three spell yeah. thing that targets it. Gosh, that's a big thing though. It's like a lot of the creatures in this deck are specifically needing rabbits, which is good and bad because it means that their base cost is really low. Mm -hmm. But if you want, like, it's good and bad because if you have a lot of mana, it's awesome because it. you can just make them really big. But at the same time, if you don't have like, any mana, then all of your creatures are going to be really weak. Yeah. Because, like, this one, it's a Zoanthrope. It's, uh, it's flying in War 2. It's a 2 drop uh, with Ravens. And then Warp Flash, whenever Zoranthrope enters the battle, it gives us X damage to the oh, target, which I assume is the mana cost that is pumped into it. Because it's X. Yeah. So whenever you paid X to get it out, that is how much it deals. It, uh, this deck also actually does have a lot of direct stuff as well. Like, yeah. When this comes out, creatures are forced to fight each other. <laughs> so it does actually have a lot of that too. Like, I'm, I'm liking the look of it. Uh, access. Tunnel. Pay one. Target creature with power three or less can't be blocked this turn. Uh, Gilded Goose. Flying. And there's a battlefield. Create a food token. Uh, pay two. Tap. Create a food token. Sacrifice a food token. Add one man of any color. There you go. Uh, Golem. Obsessed Stalker. Dude, he's really good. Skulk. This creature can't be blocked by creatures with greater power. He's a 1-1, one, one, by the way. Yeah. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent dealt damage this game by a creature named Golem, Obsessed Stalker, loses life equal to the amount of life you gained this turn. Oof! Yep. That's fucking rude! Yeah. And it's... Each opponent dealt damage by him this game, not this turn. This game? Yeah. No, I thought it said this turn. Mm-mm. Uh, yeah, life, no, yeah, life you gained this turn. Life you gained this turn. Anybody who has been dealt damage by him throughout the entire game takes that damage. Here, hold on. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent dealt damage this oh yeah, dealt damage this game by, by him. a creature hand and him loses yeah. life equal to the amount of life you gained this turn though. So it doesn't stack. No. But it means that if you but, hit, you're playing against two people and you've hit them both this game. Then you just sit back and then just fucking ramp up your yeah. health and just kill him. Yeah, because it doesn't it doesn't mean he has to hit them again ever again. 
Yeah. But if he ever dies, though, that ability goes away. Right. Which, Which is, is the only issue with that. Yeah, he's a 1 1 with no protection of any kind. Do you guys know how Evolve works? No. Yes. It, uh, it's like every time a creature with greater power or toughness oh, enters the battlefield, so he gets a plus one plus one counter on him. So if I play a card that gives all my creatures evolve, anytime I play a creature, any one of them is weaker than it, it's a plus one. Yeah, I think it's weaker in any way, too. That's it could be either power or toughness. Yeah. So, I mean, you know. It, it's definitely helpful keeping all your creatures like the same amount of power. Or just getting stronger for all the Yeah, where they're all just the same, basically. They all keep up. Okay, Eagles of the North. Here's the battlefield. Creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, and gain first strike until end of turn. Plane cycling. He's not very good. He's a six drop with that ability and fly. Yep. Uh, and he's a three three. So, some of the cards aren't good. <laughs> he's not very good. Okay, uh, Toxic Deluge. His additional cost to cast a spell, pay X life. All crews get minus X, minus X in That's pretty good. Uh, Chromatic Lantern. Lands you control okay. have... Tap. Add one mana of any color. And then tap. Add one mana of any color. That's pretty fucking uh, good. I know. So, I found the second druid. You can put this in this all deck. of your decks. You know, most of the decks will have a, a leader that's more expensive and then a cheaper one. Like, you know how my other deck did, where the lead, one leader was like six mana, and the other was like four? In the human deck, because like one was the Inquisitor, and the other was the Space Marine. Oh, sure. And I kept rolling with the Inquisitor, because she was cheaper and easier to get out. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. So I just found the secondary leader for this, and she is actually pretty good. She's, the, she's four mana, so three colors, and then red, green, blue, and then a Pelvis. But she's a one-one, right? However, spiritual leader, at the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Psychic Stimulus, tap, add two colors. When you next cast a spell with, um, pay into it like X, right? Uh, in its mana cost, or activate an ability with X in its activation cost this turn. Copy that spell or ability, you may choose new target for the copy. So I get two colors, and if I have a spell that I can tap mana into, I can use it in there, and then copy that spell. So does that mean I can use that in creatures? What do you mean? So, well, yeah, if I have a creature with Ravenous, so two mana and then tap into it to make it bigger. Is it a spell or ability? It says, when you next cast a spell with X... That's it. So, yeah. So, a creature with an ability that has X does not count. With an X in its, in mana, its cost. mana cost. Or, or activate an ability with X in its activation cost. Then yes. So, would, would that mean that I would need to pay... The base mana cost. So, for instance, so I have a two drop, right? Two base, two two with badness. So I tap her. I get two colorless. So I pay. Let's just say four. So I pay two, and then the two that I got from her into it. So it comes out as a four four. Right. 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 Okay. So, so the ability that that thing's saying is that every time you do a thing, it just you. makes it again, right? You can yeah. copy that again. So tap her. Add the two colors. When you next cast a spell with X in its mana cost, or activate an ability with X in its activation cost this turn. You get to do it again. Yes, I get to copy that. Yeah. It says you get to copy that spell or ability. Yes. So you get, so yeah, if you had... So would that mean I would just instantly get a copy of a 4-4 with that ability? Or does that mean that I would need to pay to, and then it would come out with the two because that's how much I spent in it. Or okay. Like that. So if you, so if you spend the thing to make this happen yes. and say you cast a card and with the X and say it gives you token X tokens, right? Okay. So ah. you put two, nice. You put two X, two X into it. So you get two tokens. Well, that ability would now say you get four tokens because you get another copy of the two token activation. Does that make sense? So, but if you so put I six use into the it, ability, so technically I use that ability twice. Yes, but at the own, but they, they can only they they will be the same. So whatever you spend to initially cast it will what be what the copy is. So the copy will be the same as the. Original. So if you spent six into it, that okay. the copy will also be six. So, it does, so the moment that I use those two mana in it, uh, all that I have to care about later is that the moment that whatever whatever comes out of that spell that I put those mana into. I just get another card. You get the exact same. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, so if you jump a lot, you get a lot again. Because that seems pretty thing. useful. Yeah. That theoretically means if I take a lot of mana, uh, if I take a lot of mana uh, and I use her ability, same. and I make a really big creature out of all of it, that yes. I will immediately copy it and make another really big creature. Yep, that's exactly what I mean. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so using it in the right moment, and since it's a, a, a permanent that's on a field, so you can do it multiple times, but it's only the next spell. Yeah. So you'll so maybe. Well, and so yeah. Nothing says. I mean, because it's tap her, and I get the two. So does that mean I could just have it as floating mana? Or do I have to spend her? Like, do, do you need to do something specifically to have mana float? Uh, if I can tap. Technically, her, technically, floating mana ends after each phase. So, but, but we don't. We ignore that. Yeah, so we ignore. Like, so until end of turn, you get to keep your floating mana. So in theory. I could tap her, get two colorless, and then spend one, like one of them on each, on two different spells, and then make two copies. Like make a copy of each of those instead of having both of them one. No, because her ability specifically says the next time you cast a spell. So that means yeah. that means that you only get one. Whatever the next thing in the queue. Yeah. So next thing that comes out gets that happen, but then everything after that is normal. So there's no whole thing. It all happens at the same time. So I cast these at the same time. No, you can't. Unless cast. you have a specific card that does cast things simultaneously with each other. Yeah, which well, is I've never a seen different one. Yeah, I was gonna thing. Say, unless you well, give an example, I don't know. Uh, Prime Volt Titan or Prime Evil Titan, whatever. Fucking when it comes into the battlefield or attacks, two lands enter the battlefield. Right. You get to search your library, put two lands into the battlefield, tap, and you. Okay. Those lands enter the battlefield at the same time. Okay, yeah, but it's, very, it's, it's very specific. It, it's a very specific set of circumstances. So you'll never run into this, basically. Yeah. What's yeah. What sounds like but it. it can happen. Yeah, it's technically possible. She's pretty, I mean, that's pretty cool. Only issue is that, again, she's 1 1, so it would be absolutely easy to just. A goblin RC would just play her. Just <laughs> so. shit on her a little oh. too hard. Oh. Oh, God, Brandon, stun luck. Oh, your battery's dying again. Yeah. Okay. I uh, believe you. <laughs> fair enough. I put them in there. I know. Labella, Defender of Bag End. Uh, there's a battlefield. Uh, look at the top card of each opponent's library and exile those cards face down. Tap it, sacrifice an artifact, choose one. Until on a turn, you may play a card exiled without paying its mana cost, or each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. That's interesting. Don't let it kill you. Just shooting into nothing. I'm gonna hit you. Look at it. Orchard Strider. Enters the battlefield, create two food token. Basic land cycle. Oh, yeah, so that card I, I read earlier was like all lands, tap for any color. Mm -hmm. Are you going to like get more of those to oh, put in your deck? Absolutely. They're not super expensive either. They're just, they're really good. I mean, I know it's three mana, but that's a typical like three mana like extra land card like it's very typical to just spend three mana to get some more mana yeah but with that ability it means that every was it just basic land I, is it basic land or is it know. just land because it's hard oh, like I, i've only seen the card really once hey here's here's a funny one so gene stealer patriarch gene stealer kiss whenever gene stealer patriarch attacks put an infection counter on a t on target creature defending player control Children of the Cult. Whenever, a ch whenever a creature with an infection counter on it dies, you create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a tyrannid in addition to its other types. So it seems like I can choose the creature that gets that token, and then if I insta kill it, I immediately get a copy of it, and it benefits from the t the tyrannids. Thing. Yep. Yep. That sounds about right. It is just any land, by the way. Not doesn't have to be non basic. As long as it's a land. Yeah. All lands you control have this ability. That's amazing. That's really freaking good. Uh, I mean, that would literally save all, most of your decks. Especially with slippers. Yeah. And I can swap out basically all my land for the important ones. Like yeah. basics. Yeah. Or just even a shitload of duelies. I mean, of course you have to get that card, which is, you know, it's only one. Yeah, but that's the thing. In my sliver deck, there's a bunch of, like, pull cards. Yeah, or shuffling and, like, stuff like that. Yeah. And, like... It's kind of what my what mana Wef sliver does already. Yeah. But it could be used. This interacts with my lands, and that means I now have three cards that do that. 
yeah. in a hundred card deck, yeah. I have a three in a hundred chance of, or three in ninety nine chance of pulling that card now, mm-hmm. which is crazy good in a commander. Oh well, yeah, it's a lot better than two. Exactly. So three is literally a whole extra percentage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Yeah, exactly. I and mean, that's why it's so important, though. Yeah. No, I got you. I know what's up. Yeah. I'm glad you do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I guess uh, I guess this is a good, good enough spot to end it. Yeah. So if you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing. Definitely go check out our other content. Until next time, peace out. Bye-bye.